As Darren Drager reported, the Calgary Flames will name Craig Conroy as their new general manager. Conroy's held the assistant GM title for the last, last nine years under former GM Brad Tree Living, who mutually parted ways with the team in April. The official announcement is expected Tuesday. And here's Dave Poulin joining me once again. Dave, as Darren Drager has previously reported, Don Maloney interviewed a lot of candidates for this Calgary Flames GM job, some of them with real NHL GM experience. In the end, they go with a guy who's been in the team's front office since he retired, learning on the job. Do you like that Don Maloney went that direction, rewarded that effort? I do like the process to start with, in that if you think you have an excellent candidate in-house, he certainly deserves to get looked at and looked at closely. But he also deserves to be compared, or you have the ability to compare him with people that you think might be an option. And so Craig Conroy's been there through this whole thing. He's been in nine years the AGM. Yep. So he's seen different iterations. He's seen some of the issues they have firsthand. But clearly in the interview process, he was able to portray that he has fresh eyes looking at that situation. Right. He would have handled this differently or out of respect, he didn't say this at this point or whatever that may be. But I like the process Don Maloney went through. I also like the fact that it stayed in the house. I really do because He's been there a long time, and, and he deserves a chance only if he deserves a chance. Yeah. You don't deserve it just because you're there. You've done a lot along the way. You've put yourself in a position to succeed, and you're willing and able to look at things differently. So I think he has a huge advantage over someone coming in because he knows what some of the issues are right away. He doesn't have to learn the players, learn what the issues are. He knows what they are, and that might not be as healthy for the players as you think because players have a tendency to say, Okay, great. We got a new GM now. Sure. Because I've never done anything wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that GM may look at them and go, "Yeah, you may want to clean up a few things." So yeah, that's that's fair. But it, kind of careful what you ask for. Any any thought that because of the issues this team had last year, that that maybe you also bring in a, a veteran perhaps to to help him out just to steer the ship a little bit in the early part of the, of his run? That could be the combination of those two things. I mean, yeah. it's such a big job right yeah. now. It just is. From a cap standpoint, from a, a managing people standpoint, it's a really big job. And different guys handle it in different ways. Some like a lot of people around them. Some like one or two decision makers around them. I could see that happening because you do have a strong staff in place, but a, a, a fresh set of eyes outside that's not sitting in the number one seat could be very helpful. Okay, in Toronto, it's going to be a much different process. The Leafs have started their search for a new GM. And in the words of team president Brendan Shanahan, Having an experienced general manager would be an attractive quality. Dave, safe to say uh, we'll have a familiar face, a familiar name come in to run the Leafs next it season? It certainly sounds like that. It certainly yeah. sounds like they won't be looking in-house, unlike Calgary just did. And, you know, it was unusual on Friday yeah. to hear a president in Brendan Shanahan be that detailed about what was a, I, I don't want to say it was a conversation, but it was a, an account of what went on between Monday and Friday. Correct, yeah. And I think Kyle Dubas caught everybody by surprise. It, but, okay, we can say that from sitting where we're sitting. Yeah. But it seemed like he caught everybody in-house by surprise Absolutely. as well. With the emotion. And when seasons end, you know, it, it is a really emotional time. I mean, there's a reason post-game that they don't let coaches talk for a certain amount of time. Right. It's never long enough. Yeah. It isn't. <laughs> but there's a reason. And likewise, you think of, of piling all those games on the culmination of a year, the pressures of the multiple years, the multiple disappointments at the end, and this one's so promising going in. And, and Kyle was very emotional on Monday. Yep. I think that, the unusualness of someone in that position being that candid was uncomfortable for some, but, but probably unusual for others. And, and then you heard Brendan Shanahan say it, it, he changed his thinking about what he wanted to do. There was a contract offer on the table for Kyle Dubas, and then at some point in the week he decided he didn't want that contract offer to be there anymore. And he detailed the fact that Dubas and his representatives came back to them with their own counterproposal. This is the kind of stuff you just never hear publicly. I, I'm blown away by it, and I can only think that Shanahan brought it to the public to, in a sense, make the team look a little bit better than they would have had they let a guy go who talked about the fact that he was burned out and that his family had a tough year. And yet he said it wasn't about money. So if he said it wasn't about money, that's why, that wasn't why Kyle wasn't coming back. It was right. that he didn't, you know, wasn't sure that he wanted to be the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right. 
but then that shouldn't have made a difference that Kyle came back. Right. Or that his represent, representation came back. Right. Because if it wasn't about money, then you just dismiss that offer and say, no, that's not on the table. This is still on the table. Yeah. It sounded like the the coming back, the, the second proposal was what really was upset. really threw it off. Yeah. Not, because if it if it was, you just say, okay, well, we're fine with the first proposal. Right. We still want you back, but here's the first proposal. Yeah. Yeah. But clearly there was something that Kyle said on the Monday that made Brendan very uncomfortable. Well, I, I just feel like... A negotiation is a negotiation. You've been in them. I've been in them at this mm -hmm. place. I mean, normally it doesn't come out like that unless you want it to well, come out. Well, from one side too, though, right? Right, now. right. You know, and that's that's what it is so far. And I'm not sure Kyle will speak. Yeah, it's a great question. Will we ever get his yeah. side of it? Yeah. Right. And now it's going to be interesting because he wasn't available, so no one could express an interest. He did say that I won't be working anywhere else. I'm going to be the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, or I'm going to spend time. Recalibrating is what yeah. is the words that he That's used. Right. Um, does that change, or or is it? St it shouldn't because it should still be the reason that he was going to be the general manager of the Leafs, or he wasn't going to be in the business for Wait, a while. So. But one wonders if the way things played out last week, if that changes things, maybe that changes Kyle. More than assessment. anything, time changes things. Yeah, because when you do come off a season, Jay, you're beat up. Yeah, like you're beat up physically, you're beat up emotionally, and you just are. Yeah. And, and that's time away is very important. Maybe time away is what will change it more than an opportunity. Big decisions looming for whomever gets that job and big decisions looming for Craig Conroy in Calgary. Dave, this is a pleasure. Thanks for this.